Welcome to the Elevate Media Podcast with your host, Chris Anderson. In this show, Chris and his guests will share their knowledge and experience on how to go from zero to successful entrepreneur. They have built their businesses from scratch and are now ready to give back to those who are just starting. Let's get ready to learn, grow, and elevate our businesses. And now your host, Chris Anderson. The steps, the five steps to launching uh, not just a podcast, but a successful podcast. Um, because, you know, you can just launch one. You know, you just throw it out there and, and, and see what happens. But, um, you know, there are ways to to go about it that make it more successful. And at Elevate Media, we aim to get our clients in the top 10% and uh, or top 5% based on um, the different packages that they choose because uh, there's different things we have to do uh, and and lead them to getting in those top percentages of globally listened to shows. So with that being said, um, launching a successful podcast or, or excuse me, launching a podcast successfully um, really isn't that much harder. You just have to make sure you do the things in the right order and um, you know, actually put the, a little bit of effort behind it to get it out there because you can just throw it together, you know, re- record something real quick and, and uh, push it out there and it, it just won't end up uh, the same unless you have a detailed plan kind of behind it. I want to start with, you know, the very first step into launching a podcast successfully. Uh, and and this, this, t- this does, you know, matter, this first step. Um, so you've got to be, you know, kind of mm, choosing on purpose because the first one is your host site. Okay. So your podcast host site, where is that going to be? And the podcast host site is the online location that you upload your episodes and schedule them for release. So this is like Buzzsprout, which is what we highly recommend people using just because of the ease of uh, use, um, the, you know, the metrics they track, the, the customer service phenomenal, and the ability to monetize and everything. So we recommend Buzzsprout as a podcast host site, but there are others out there. Podbean's good. Um, I would say I would stay away from Anchor, uh, just my personal opinion. Let me know in the comments if you disagree and why, but Anchor is just, uh, you know, if it's free, there's got to be, uh, they got to make money somehow. And so, and just some of the things they've done recently, but anyways, I digress. So, so host site is the first step in, and choosing your host site is important because, um, for example, us getting our clients into the directories, which is part of the first step, um, we have not had many issues at all using Buzzsprout and they've gotten them into those directories um, really simply and and really quickly. So that's why we really like Buzzsprout because it's just simple. We've, we've had really good success with it and you can continue to, to track and, and, you know, monetize your show and they're continually changing too and, and improving, which is amazing. So that's step one, picking your host site. Um, and not just leaving it to like, you know, it's free. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this one, but actually doing a little due diligence. Like I said, we, we recommend Buzzsprout, but there are some other good ones as well and getting that set up. Okay. So don't take forever researching any of this that we're going to talk about today. Just, you know, look at who's doing good, doing well on their show, where are they hosting and, um, hop on there. And then with that, the next or part of step one is getting into the directories. So again, um, it can be a little intimidating because there's so many and there's different steps to get into those directories. When I'm talking about directories, I'm meaning, <clears throat> excuse me, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Pandora, Alexa, iTunes, iHeartRadio, um, to all the others, Overcast. There's, there's, you know, I think close to 20 now. So, Buzzsprout makes it simpler, um, but again, we take the technical headache out of that by doing it for you. But anyways, if you're doing it yourself, make sure you're getting in those directories correctly, and you want to aim to get into the directories 
you know, a couple of days before your launch date. Cause you don't want to sit in the directories for a month before you launch because you have to have an episode uploaded at least one to get into uh, the directories. And you don't want to just be sitting there for months because then you, you miss out on being new, the algorithm picking you up, especially if you um, are doing these next steps well. So you want to get in the directories about a couple days before launch day, as close as launch day as you can um, to decrease the amount of time you're quote unquote live. Cause once you're in the directories, you're live. So you want to cut that number, cut that gap down when you launch. So getting in those directories, uh, closer to launch day. So again, you got to set that launch date for one for sure. Uh, and stick with it. We go for about 30 days. That's our goal with our clients launch in 30 days or less, depending on what they want. Um, and how fast they can get the, the steps done. So the first one, finding and getting in your host site and start working on the directories or at least looking at the steps because the next step, um, the next two steps come before you can upload into the directories. And the next step is getting your tech and your gear situated and figured out. Um, and that can be super overwhelming for people, especially if they don't have any background in the podcasting world or any sort of live streaming video production world at all. Uh, there's so many, you know, opinions and, and what's better and what's good and, you know, different types of my dynamic versus condenser and, you know, cameras and, you know, budgets and all this stuff. And it can actually, it'll hinder people from actually starting because they have no clue what to get uh, and what's right for them. And so you've got to really kind of sit down, think about what you're doing. Are you wanting to do a, a podcast where you're mobile, where you're, you know, going out on the street interviewing people? Because that's going to look different than if you're in a, a studio or a room like I am. So you've got to figure that out for one. And then you've got to go and adjust your tech and gear accordingly. And um, I'll put in the comments below here um, a link to the kit that we've created, the one I use specifically for live streaming and then some other ones. Um, if you're looking to do DSLR or if you're looking to do just uh, mobile uh, podcasting, we have a couple of those. So uh, I'll share that link. And if I don't uh, or if you don't see it and you're interested in that, just reach out, let me know. And uh, I'd, I'd happily give you that link so you can check out what we use. So you can um, hopefully cut down and not, not have to worry about so much. Um, yeah. Gene says the range of tech equipment can be incredibly confusing, even still for people who know what they're looking for <laughs> yet. Gene it's it's very true. So true. Um, so Gene, he does, or he, he, I think he still does Gene, uh, correct me if I'm wrong though. He would do live stream gaming, uh, on Twitch and things like that. And, and it's, it's a really cool platform and what he does there. He also, you know, does rapping and, and things like that. So check out Gene and what he's doing. Uh, he's doing a lot of cool things and he puts a lot of cool, he's a funny guy anyways. Uh, we went to college together. So, but he's right. Like what he said here, range of tech equipment can be incredibly confusing, even still for people who know what they're doing and looking for. Um, because there is so much out there and, you know, what's actually better than, than this thing. And, uh, so you've got to just think about your budget. You got to think about, you know, what, how you, what you're doing. Are you doing Twitch like Gene is, or you're making music like Gene is, or are you doing a live stream podcast like me, or are you going to be on the road? You know, there's people who record in their cars. So you, your setup needs to look and feel a little bit different with that. Uh, obviously, you're not going to have all the lighting and, and things if you're in a car or mobile. So just think about how you're going to do the show, how the setup's going to be, where your setup's going to be, and, and then kind of base it off of that. Um, for example, I use a Shure. I upgraded from the Fafine. Uh, I love the Shure. I, I love it now. I think it sounds great. It's easy to, I mean, use. It's not too hard to set up and I'm just in a room. I got furniture and curtains to help with the, the reverb and the echoing. Um, and it can always be improved. That's the thing. We can always get better uh, unless we have, you know, billions of dollars to have the, you know, top of the line, everything. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. What he says. So he went to Sweetwater, which is like an audio acoustic store um, to update his microphone and they had like 12 of the same price range. So really when it comes down to it, it's just preference. Um, and, you know, again, look into those who are, are doing it and doing it well 
and see what they're using um, and see what their setup is like. Cause they, sh- they could have a certain mic, but they have a super acoustically padded room. Um, so that fits better. So, so the tech and gear, you've got to play around a little bit. You know, I've got the roadcaster pro over here. I've got just webcams right now until I upgrade to DSLR one day, got my lights, my monitors, all that's on those lists. So that's the second step. You got to figure the gear out and that would be crazy. You can start with your, your cell phone. You can start there um, and just use that. It's better than not starting. So you don't have to, you know, throw a bunch of money to this. You can literally start with your smartphone and make it work. Um, and yeah, so that's the second step, figuring out your tech and gear. And then after that, now you've actually got to record, record three to five episodes is what we like to say to get ready for launch day. Okay. So you've got your host site, you're, you're understanding the directories, you've got your gear now. Now you're going to record three to five episodes, one of those being the trailer. So just a short, hey, this is who I am. This is what the show's about. Super excited for you to be here because um, we put that one in first. So that one will, will go live the day before launch day um, or the, the couple of days before so you can start getting in the directories. Um, some of them take a little bit longer. Pandora takes a couple of weeks. So we're just kind of, we always kind of just, wait on let that one just kind of happen when it happens because spotify and apple you're too big too you got to really get in there quick um with so prep those episodes ahead that like i said the trailer is going to come out you're going to launch the trailer a couple days before your launch day so you're in the directories and then you're going to schedule the next three to five to go out on launch day at the same time why we do this so you want to have something for people to kind of dig into to to binge you think about netflix right they put out a series or a limited series and uh you know you get through with one episode and you know continue or or whatever um and you end up binging it because you get you know engrossed in it but if it's a new show and say for whatever reason maybe it got canceled and they only had so many episodes and you get to the end or the season's over and you forget about it that's the same thing. We want people to to be able to really chew on what you're putting out there, really kind of dive into it and get hooked on it and to be excited for next week when you release an episode. So if it was just one episode, you know, it, it could be amazing, it could be great, but it just probably it, it's not enough to get people excited and and to come back. And then on top of that, when you have three to five. Um, hopefully if they're listening to them, they'll hear you say rate and review the show. And eventually they will early on, which is part of the next step. <clears throat> but with that as well, if they're downloading a bunch of episodes for your podcast right out of the gate, that's going to look good in the algorithms on the directories. So, Oh, you know, Joe Schmo's show, you know, just launched day five episodes in, in each episode has 20, 30 you know, downloads or more is what we're hoping for. Um, and, and so that's going to, that's going to help push you into, you know, the, the charting or, or in, in the globally, you know, top percentages uh, of listen to shows. So, and, and, and even if you don't make it in the, you know, top percentages starting out, obviously that's your goal and that's what we've been good at doing, but there's still some that don't, and that's okay. My show, when I started, didn't immediately get into the the top uh percent globally listened to um i had to figure all that out and and figure out how to you know grow and and get it out there to people and and, you know now yeah great we're in the top two percent globally listened to show top three percent two and a half three whatever it is like great cool like it's awesome i'm grateful for it I'm, i'm i'm grateful people are listening all over the world but it's just at the end, it's just another percentage. Sure, you can you can kind of use it if you're talking to sponsors or guests, just to show like you put in the work to get there. Um, but again, it's just another metric, and it's just something you got to work towards, no matter when it happens. So, again, the three to five episodes help to expedite that process, um, and then this next step really helps expedite it, and that's building your launch team. So, building your launch team is the fourth step. And, and it's really the most crucial if you really want to have a successful launch 
getting in that top percentage, getting charted, getting in the new noteworthy, you know, getting all that right off the bat, building your launch team. Okay. So you've already, I mean, you've grown an audience on social media. You've probably grown an email list. Um, with your launch team, it's basically just an extension of what you've already done, except now you're putting out to people, hey, we're going to launch podcast. This podcast is coming, you know, just market the heck out of it for that month, push it out there, get people excited, give them a launch date so they know when it's coming, keep pushing stuff out and use something to get them or their information collected for your launch team. So maybe it's a freebie. Maybe it's, you know, whatever, whatever it is that draws your, your audience in and say, Hey, if you want to be on the launch team for this podcast for a chance to win a, whatever merchandise you have or a free coaching session or, you know, a free checklist, like fill this out. And so then you build a list of people who are interested in the podcast and you can then continue to send information to them through email or text or whatever you do. Therefore, when launch day comes, you have a list of people that you've built that you've created over this last 30 days that it's live and you're you're pushing it okay you're you're letting them know you're reminding them and reminding them to go help help you so you can do more for them by having them rate and review the show downloading subscribing following and, and building that kind of launch up in the algorithms of these directories so that's the fourth one building that launch team and there are a lot of ways to build the launch team you could do a lot of different things to, to build that list or, or get people excited. Um, and, and of course, the more interaction you have on your social media, the easier it'll be because, you know, people are already tuned in and, and, and connecting with what you're doing. So you put something out there and they're going to follow it. So um, just building that launch team is that fourth step that's, that's super crucial that a lot of people don't think about. They just, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell people uh, a couple times get it all set up. I'm going to launch. I'm just going to tell them and hopefully they go. So if you build that launch team and they're connected to you, a specific list of people who are interested in the podcast, you can specifically target them when the podcast launches to get more people um, tuned in right away, which helps tremendously uh, getting in the top percentage of shows. So that's four step. The fifth step, super, it's just launch. It's the easiest one. Just get it out there. Don't, don't, uh, don't change your mind. Don't step back from it. Just go forward, launch it. That's the fifth. It's as simple as that. Um, getting it out there. You know, a lot of the fear that comes with it, a lot of things I hear from people why they don't start a podcast. They don't have time. You know, uh, they have too much going on already, bandwidth, uh, which plays into time. And those are kind of the main ones I hear. You know, I don't have enough time or I've, I'm, I'm focused on another project right now, which is all valid. So, so there's nothing wrong with that, but you know, you've got to think to, to scale your business, your brand, you've got to be seen more. You've got to be able to put more content out. You know, Gary V you should be posting five times a day. Well, a podcast can expedite that content creation, you know, from one episode you could get, you know, five to 10 pieces of content just in video clips and then you have audio clips and then you have static content you can create from it. Uh, now, I mean, there, there are some that say they can get like a hundred something from an episode. Um, and they, and they really stretch with that because they're talking about each directory is and that each directory is a piece of content and you know, your YouTube video and then all the, so they stretch, which I mean, can be done, but you don't want to water down the episode by taking it all apart. Um, but you can get a decent amount of content from one episode that you don't have to then recreate anything. You just break it down or you come to us and we do everything for you at elevate the editing, the content creation, every, all of that. So you can do it for, you know, as little as an hour a week, less than that. If you have shorter episodes. So those are the five steps to launching a successful podcast. I hope, I hope something in this helped brought value or, or sparked interest or uh, motivated you to to start uh, your journey with podcasting. It's a great medium. It's a growing medium. It's a uh, it's going to continue to become the main 
form of, you know, communication and sharing. Um, and, and especially in that content, content loop strategies that businesses and brands are coming up with, because again, I can take this recording and I can put it on YouTube, but I can take the audio and I can edit it up a little bit, cut some stuff out. I can put it on my, as a podcast episode. And then I can break it down into real or a YouTube short. I can make static content from this. So it opens up the door to really beef up your content strategy and elevate you in the eyes of your audience as the expert even more because you're getting in front of them face-to-face basically on their screen. They can see you instead of just hearing you or just seeing your clip on social media, you talking about a topic and, and you become more of an expert in their eyes. So it's why it's so crucial that if you're doing a podcast or you you know have a business or brand that you incorporate a video live streaming podcast in your content content strategy um, because it's going to it's going to elevate you above competition. It's going to just elevate you in the market, and it's going to just increase basically everything you do: more sales, more uh, following, you know, more confidence. Thank you for listening to the Elevate Media podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. See you in the next episode.